We are back with Adrian Lyle for our premiere minute. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you. So this segment is going to go over who you are outside of horses. I think people truly want to know what you do besides ride horses. Tell me, what was your last great meal that you can recall? I think, God, my last epic meal, the, the Mitchells, who are, are our vets down here, mm -hmm. cook an amazing Christmas brunch. Okay. I think that was one of the best meals I've had all year. Really? If you had to pick one cuisine, Mexican, Italian, sushi, you tell me, what would it be? It would be breakfast food. Breakfast food? Yes. Going back to your uh, Christmas brunch then. Exactly. Really into the breakfast food. <laughs> okay. Now, Adrian, I also know that you are a fond lover of music. Who are your all-time favorite bands? I know that's a hard one. It is a hard one. There's so many, but I love kind of the older classic stuff. I was a huge Dylan fan. I oh. took over all my dad's old, you know, Jimi Hendrix records, and I have all those vinyls now with me. So I'm kind of an old classic rock junkie. On vinyl. On vinyl. No I've got kidding. An amazing vinyl player, and I'm slowly stealing his records from his house <laughs> in Washington. He doesn't know. <laughs> I'm building up my collection. <laughs> Tell me the last movie that you saw. I don't think I've been to a movie theater for years. I have kind of limited attention span when it comes to making myself sit down in one place and focus on one thing. Sure. I'm probably the most annoying person to try to watch a movie with at home because I'm up and down 30 times and I'm doing this and that and getting distracted and so <laughs> I generally don't go to the movies very often. Okay, well what, uh, not movies, have you read any good books lately? Well, I just finished Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale. That was an interesting one. Okay, alright. Now, I know in your earlier days, you were you did eventing. Uh, do you still jump at all? I do occasionally. Sometimes um, Bob will let me sit on some of the hunter jumpers at the barn, uh -huh. and I actually have my younger cousin, um, Maya Black, who I'm very close to. We kind of grew up like sisters. We grew up on the same farm together. She is a big eventer. Oh. Um, she uh, does you know the three-star events, and she's back east okay. now. And she comes to Idaho usually in the summers for about a month for me to help her with her dressage, and so she'll throw me up on her eventing horses, and we can go play around and jump some cross-country jumps when she's there. Much littler than I used to, but it's still fun to get out of the <laughs> dressage arena. You still get that thrill? Oh, yeah. What pastimes do you have outside of horses? Well, when we're not down here in Florida, we're at home in Sun Valley, Idaho. It's beautiful. It's a little ski resort. So um, when I'm there in the winter, I'm, I love to ski. My families are big skiers. Um, when I'm there in the summer, it's anything outdoors, camping, hiking, fishing, rafting, anything and everything to stay outside. It's so beautiful up there. So an outdoors woman. Outdoors, all the Perfect. way. Perfect. <laughs> what do you think you would be doing as a profession had your writing and your teaching career not has been as successful as it has been? I what was your contingency plan, in other words? I had no contingency plan, so I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be wandering around the world aimlessly traveling. I honestly, I remember being in like third grade and you had to take those aptitude tests and it mm -hmm. was like, what are you going to be as a career? And all I like, like failed all of them because I was like, I'm going to train horses. And they were like, that's not a job, Adrian, that's a hobby. And so I just remember failing every career aptitude test the whole time. So thank God it's worked out so far. Yeah. I had no plan B. Talk about proving the counselor wrong. <laughs> I've seen pictures of you and your horse wizard trail riding. How do you think, or do you still trail ride? And do you think that it helps dressage in that aspect? I'm a big believer in cross-training your horse. I think yeah. it helps them, not just physically, but mentally. Mm -hmm. um, and Wizard used to be very nervous on the trails. You know, he'd kind of sit there and jig the whole time, and he was super tense. And it, But over the years, he's become more comfortable with it. We have some wonderful trails at River Grove in Idaho that he goes out on. All my horses do on a daily basis after they're done working. And so it's just a great to keep them mentally fresh. I think they really enjoy it and expose them to new things, build confidence, and yeah. not always just be drilling on them in an arena. Sure. I've actually walked the River Grove trails, and they are quite Yeah, they're pretty lush. nice. Yes, they are. <laughs> Tell us something that we, meaning the fans, don't know about you. I think what a lot of people don't know is that I did not come from a horsey family mm. at all. Um, my family is actually big skiers, if anything. My dad was a coach for many years. My mom was a quite accomplished women's downhill skier. She was on the women's team for many years. Wow. Um, and that's actually how I kind of came about in a roundabout way to work for Debbie McDonald, was they had a ski condo in Idaho. And that's how that connection came about when I first found River Grove Farm years ago. I see. So you actually come from a downhill family, but now you're riding an uphill horse, as they say. <laughs> yep. Adrian, I have to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>